Welcome back to week four of the NVIDIA Hearthstone Pro-Am uh, tournament here. My name is Frodi, I'm joined by Nymph from Cloud9, where we're going to be once again bringing to you guys uh, four show matches today. We're going to try to fit in four. We started a little bit late. We apologize for the technical difficulties, uh, but we are live. So, Nymph, how's it going? Uh, how's it nice to be back to Poland from Sea Story Cup 3? Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been great. Like, Seed Story Cup was amazing, and uh, finally I'm back home. I can cast some games with you again. Mm -hmm. And um, I missed the last week before I was, uh, because I was traveling, but I'm happy to be back here again to see uh, how our pros are doing in the, in the pro part of the tournament. That's right. Uh, we had some interesting results so far. Some players who we expect are doing well are doing, like, okay, and then some players who have been uh, working really hard. Last week, for example, uh, we had a lot of 3 zeros, which was unexpected. Uh, most notably, to start things off, we had... Uh, life coach versus tides, or sorry, tides. Yeah, he, where he was able, to, where he got swept pretty quickly, and then of course uh, six zero defeated Colento very quickly as well. So maybe to this time around, we'll be able to see uh, pretty much the same thing. Um, looks like we're just gonna go straight into game, just because again we started a little bit late. We have RDU versus Freshka, and RDU he played earlier uh, with this uh, Mech Shaman in the Kingwin Pro League, and it seems like he's gonna bring it here today as well up against Freshka's Freeze Mage. Or uh, Mech Mage. What am I talking about, man? <laughs> this is a Mech Mage. I saw, well, I saw the uh, I saw the snow, snow chugger, and I was like, he's gonna freeze him. Yeah, yeah. it can it can be confusing there. Well, uh, this Mech Mage is really interesting. Uh, Mech Mage. <laughs> I mean, the Mech Shaman because we've seen it before, and uh, I think Kunga was streaming it today as well. Uh, it, I, I believe the deck is running Fell Reavers, so it's a, a new uh, take of the uh, on the shaman with max that's super aggressive is um, good with board control and can really steamroll most of the decks yeah the the deck is a lot like mech mage although it just has the this explosiveness that people are not anticipating whatsoever uh, you have the whirling zapomatic which sometimes nets you like a turn three or four kill because you have rock biters and you have flame tongue totems or you just build up a strong board with the normal mechs, and then you burst them down with a really strong board. Or you can even play tempo a little bit slower if you're up against a mid-range or a little bit slow, a faster deck. So you can play slower, um, use the fire elemental to gain tempo, and then just kill them with the normal way that you pressure a shaman. So there's lots of flexibility in this deck. The only thing about it is that I feel like the draw consistencies are not as norm are not as good as um, some normal aggro decks. And not to mention that you can't bounce back if a board is stronger than you. It's just like you don't have Lightning Storm. So if you fall too oh, far yeah. behind, you're just going to die. Absolutely. And then um, when facing the Mech Mage, it's uh, really similar to a Mirror Match because both decks are uh, Mech heavy and it's all about trading minions. Whoever ends up with the bigger board in the end is uh, favored to win the game. Because even though you have the Burst, you have the Crackles or, uh, or the Doomhammer sometimes with Robiters, Still, if your opponent builds up the board like we see here, it, it's, it's really difficult to, to come from behind. Right now, uh, Freshka has a big advantage with a good board, uh, the last mage in his hands, and, uh, and he can just uh, continue going face, and even without the fireball, his board is really powerful here. Mm, yeah, the <clears throat> last mage results... That was uh, bad. It's, it's, it's okay. I mean, not the, not the best. Um, but in the end, he, he could still pick off a trade against the opponent's Mech Warper and then push for damage. Normally, um, Shaman would be favored with um, the Power Mace, but then this Snow Chugger is actually shutting Power Mace down. So there is no other weapon to uh, destroy the Power Mace. Power Mace will just uh, continue being useless. And this game is really soon to be over uh, in favor of Freshka. Yeah, there's actually no way for him to stabilize too easily unless this pilot shredder gets something really big uh, to stall for time, like a Noyotron. Uh, Armor Smith. Uh, well, it stays I think alive. It's, all right. it's kind of annoying and it gives you a little bit of stability. And if RDU can, I mean, this deck can do upwards of 20 damage in a turn if you let it to set up for a board ever. So. There are ways you can bounce back, but it's still really tough from this spot. I think this Armor Smith is actually an amazing card to get because uh, right now Freshka has six points of damage at the face, and then leaving Guardian on seven. Normally, a fireball top deck would end the game, but this Armor Smith is offering some additional points of health that normally Shaman can't get. 
So with this, uh, if he doesn't go for the trades, if he goes for face, he might end up not being able to seal the game. Yeah, this uh, this is a pretty big deal. It's six health being gained as a result. And maybe that's an opportunity to climb back if RDU can pick up some really nice mechs to synergize with his power mace. But he doesn't get a Noyatron. He only has two Whirling Zapomatics and a Crackle this turn, which I expect him to be dumping here and trying yeah. to stabilize to make sure not to take too much damage. Uh, I think he's in a good position now. The only... Problem might be um, the mirror entity from Mad Scientist, but other than that, he should be able to clear the max, mm -hmm. uh, buff the Whirlwind Zabomatic, build up a board. Uh, well, the RDU's aim here is to survive. If he can survive for the next two, three turns, he will just win the game with with the sheer power. Also, that Ragnaros uh, next turn, if the all min if all minions are cleared, will be super powerful. Unless there is the mirror entity from uh, mm -hmm. Mad Scientist. Wow. Uh, getting the healing totem or the or the taunt totem would have been great, so that way he can keep this uh, this Whirling Zebematic alive, and as a result, heals up out of that range. Fireball is drawn, and it's a little nerve-wracking. That's the armor smith. I mean, if your opponent picks up Rock Biter, that's 22 damage. <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, at this point, you either kill the 5-5 five five to uh, give yourself a bit more chances to draw into cards, or you just yellow face and try to draw into another Fireball or Frostbolt. Right, but now you're going to force him to trade and give you a little bit of life. Ooh, Fire Elemental, it's a little dangerous just because it the Battle Cry activates as soon as Mirror Energy is played and from the deck, so you give him a 6-5 minion. So you have to kill off this uh, this mad scientist, but you're most likely going to have to play a minion after that. And uh, it, it becomes a tricky situation. Maybe RDU can have the mirror entity be effective um, if he can get like a smaller minion and immediately snipe it for the following turn. So he plays Willing's Epimatic the following turn and then uh, snipes it. But he's just going to play it now. Okay. Makes yeah, a lot of sense too, just so he can get as much pressure on the board. I like it. Right now, he's just uh, setting up lethal for next turn. And uh, RDU is just really emotional now. He knows that if there is a Frostbolt or Fireball, he's dead. But Fresh Guy got a blank. Tinkertown Technician is not going to do it. And how much damage is this? should be lethal with 12, 22, 23 points of damage. It's like exactly for, for RDU. No, wait, that's 25. Ten, so. Yeah, there's 10, 16. But with Fire uh, Yeah, good. actually, it's, it's a lot. It's plenty. Because you should have Power Mace and Fire Elemental now, so you get the guaranteed shot. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it was even if he did, he'd be able to shoot it down. So, RDU, looks like he's going to try to go for a little bit of the extra BM here. Shoot down with Ragnaros and uh, end the game that way. Pretty great explosive way to end the game. And, you know, more importantly, showcasing that the Shaman deck, if it just needs to set up one or two turns, can turn on the, the Jets and shut your opponent down. And that's the strength of this deck. Wow, that was actually an amazing game, because mm -hmm. normally I would say that Mech Mage had an advantage, and Fresh Guy got everything he needed. The Armor Smith gave RDU those extra points of health to be able to stabilize and, and take the lead and, and take the game. And I want to remind the, the, the viewers that we are playing Conquest here. Uh, those players brought three decks each, and uh, now with Shaman winning the, the game, Shaman is eliminated. RDU has to take uh, one of the other two decks he brought and win versus right. Fresh Guy's setup. Uh, Fresh Guy still has that Mech Mage available for him. Yeah, that's right. And so if we have a look at the classes, RDU has uh, Rogue Mage and the Shaman, which was just eliminated. And, uh, you know, can Freshka bounce back here? It definitely can. I feel like some people were talking about, you know, where does where does Conquest sit in comparison to last year's standing? And one thing that people pointed out is that comebacks are much more likely because in last year's standing, what would happen is you would line up the decks so that way you can have a counter for your opponent's counters to your decks. And if you would, if like you lost one, sometimes the strategy would come crumbling down and you'd have 3 0. Versus Conquest, there's multiple chances. Um, these decks generally are more consistent. That's why you have Druid, even though it might not be favored in many matchups, uh, it definitely can win. So let's see if Freshka has uh, something pretty cool planned. I, I would have to imagine that if there's anybody that's going to bust out a Grim Patron Warrior, it would be Freshka, because he's that kind of guy that really can likes he, doing fun stuff. 
can you tell us more about Freshka? Like, I know Freshka, but uh, I'm sure like not all the viewers are familiar with with him. And I know you guys are friends uh, for a long time as well. Yeah, I met Freshka on ladder like last year. Sometime just continually playing against weird decks, very weird decks, just completely out of the the loop. Just he would use really strange cards all the time that I just wasn't expecting. Um, you know, like Gelbin Mecha Torque and stuff like that, like Elite Tor and Jeeft, and really just interesting guy in terms of how he deck builds. And uh, he kept following that path, and he ended up being <clears throat> one of the best players to ha practice with because he's so he's so capable of playing normal decks, just like everyone else, but he can also think really outside the box and make a lot of cool deck building decisions. Uh, really underrated. In fact, a lot of people, if you can tap into history books, Part of the reason why players like Amaz had success in the past and Firebat is because of guys like Freshka, but no, not many people know that fact. Oh yeah, but now Freshka is here invited as one of the pro players, and he has a chance to pro himself. But um, RDU being a threat as well, a great player from Team, team Nihilum, and having a good matchup for the second game, uh, Zoo versus Warrior, originally a very good matchup for Zoo. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see how it turns out for you. Zoo is insane nowadays, Nims. It's back, and I know a lot of people aren't happy to see it, but you better get a com You better get comfortable and accommodated because Zoo is here with Imp Gang Boss, and it's not just Imp Gang Boss, but it's the fact that Imp Gang Boss shores up its mid game, early mid game consistency, that you don't have to worry too much about the board. If you have that plus implosion, you pretty much won't lose it, and you have a lot of small minions. On top of that, you get to scale into the late game with void callers into your big late game demon. So it just has this uh, robust behavior that can go from beginning to end of the game, um, and it's always a threat. Even if you have fiery war axe, it's like before it used to be like fiery war axe was a win, but now it's like. If you fire your war axe, you need to make sure you follow a really good curve, which what happens to be what Freshka has, but still, it's it might be a tough game to win. Oh yeah, it definitely looks good for Freshka um, because Warrior can kill itself without having those early drops. But yeah. uh, I'm I'm also happy to see the Zoo back, and this build is definitely different than what we've seen in the past with all the new cards. And it's cool to see how decks are actually change changing with the with the new additions. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. Um, but, you know, Warrior curving out against a more aggressive deck, I'm not saying that Ag Zoo is necessarily considered aggro now. People are starting to call it mid-range, in fact. But, um, you know, with that knowledge, even if uh, the Zoo is a little bit slower slash faster, the fact is Warrior has a great hand. It, he's got two weapons, he's got uh, minions to play on curve, he's got the board, and it's going to be a little bit tricky to try and seize it back, especially if Voidcaller can't really gain anything tempo-wise by summoning a demon from the hand. Oh yeah, but the power of Zoo also is that Zoo can use the Warlock Hero power, so Zoo's getting lots of advantage from normal cards and uh, a lot of card draw as well. And the power of the of this matchup uh, from the Zoo perspective is that Zoo is just throwing the, the waves of minions in the air, and at some point Warrior just um, runs out of answers and you know you just can't answer them anymore and you run out of cards and Zoo eventually overflows you with minions uh, I mean there's only so much though before these bigger minions are problematic to deal with uh, but you know tapping into power overwhelming does allow him to deal with it at least the if he's choosing to go for Sludge Belcher or uh, the Pilot Shredder now Again, Artie is going to be looking for some demons, so that way Voidcaller can have that explosiveness, and you can taunt it up too. And that's what makes this deck truly scary, in my opinion, because it's like, th there's a 4-5 taunt minion, which is already a reasonable threat, but now he also has demons. Or giants? <laughs> a sea giant? Well, with Gangboss just, you know, spawning minions, I think it's, it's a very interesting choice. Also, uh, you have Implosion, I believe, in your deck, so another card that spawns a lot of a lot of small minions that can work with the Sea Giant. That's Especially so after cute. looking at Phil Reaver working in Shaman, you know, like having another 8-8 eight, eight. with Sea Giant. Might be tough to answer. Yeah, that's really interesting to me. We haven't seen this since Sixo tried putting this in and became number one legend on like every server. Just through sheer brutal efficiency of the deck 
and uh, Implosion slash Sea Giant was such a nasty combo. But that was, you know, four months ago, three months ago when GVG first came out. Yeah, I blame Gang Boss. That's the card that's definitely bringing the Sea Giant here for RDU. Yeah. And that's one of the strengths of the players that are deck builders. Like, they are not afraid of trying new cards and uh, trying new builds. And, and this is exactly the time to try new cards when mm -hmm. we have the new adventure modes uh, releasing new cards every week. Man, but how big are these weapons? The fact that he keeps stacking weapon after weapon is so huge. Oh, there's an implosion top deck. He even has ways where he can fight back against a huge board. You know, in the instance, for example, if his opponent dropped Ragnaros, he can steal it with Sylvanas now. Um, at the same time, maybe Warrior can start being on the aggressive in two turns. Just can play Dr. Boom now, Alex Straza. If your opponent can't deal with Dr. Boom, you hit the face. Or you clear the board uh, if things get a little dicey and then you use Gromash to finish. It's all possible with that three-card combination. Yeah, it's actually looking good for the Warrior now, because the, the long game seems to be favoring the Warrior. But honestly, I can't say who is, who is going to win this still. It's not like one of the players have uh, a real advantage, especially looking at Aryu's hand with double power and Abyssal Surgeon getting 10 points of damage out of nowhere. Mm, man, it's really tough, because he can't do everything. He can't play power and Abyssal Surgeon and the Seed Giant. Or can he? If he plays, wait, 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 wait. If he plays abusive sergeant, yeah, he plays abusive sergeant first, actually, and then he plays uh, the sea giant, power. right? Yeah, I because sea giant okay. will be for four. No right, right, right. Okay. Well, he's gonna opt to try and maybe get boombot RNG. Uh... Oh, it didn't work. It's well, so now good. there's lots of damage. How much damage is this? That's oh, that's right. How much damage does he have? He's got 10 in hand. This so, is looking sick for Freshka. Doing so much damage with Alex Treza. I mean, are you 6 damage off lethal? He's 1 damage off lethal. Wait. This is 3, 8, 15? Yeah. That's so Artie's, uh, he, yeah, he's one damage off lethal. Is there a way he can make this happen if he steals? No, he can't. He can't steal the boom bot and then do something with it that turn. Yikes! Well, he, that's uh, really interesting because he will have to make a defensive play, and I don't think defensive play will work here because Fresh Cal already has Gramash and the weapon ready for the kill next turn. So whatever Artie steals will not save him. But this game is so close, it's just incredible. Yeah, it's uh, one damage off from RDU, and that's, again, another thing that you don't really expect Zoo to do, especially as the uh, more aggressive deck, you're anticipating it being a little bit faster, and then when it gasses out, you're done. RDU needs a lot of help. It would have to be, like, taunt and Defender of Argus, maybe. Yeah, but... Um, you know, in this scenario, you can't win. So, Artie taps out. Freshko wins with Warrior. And, uh, you know, that, that's what the Warrior deck's supposed to do. It's If it curves out really well, it's very effective against the deck like Zoo. That's why it's starting to get a lot of popularity on ladder. Oh, yeah, and that's a very uh, important win for Freshko as well because right now he's tied. And even though the, the matchup was uh, in favor of RDU, Freshko was able to get the cards he needed and... Uh, and take the win. So right now, for Freshka, Warrior's out, and he still has his Mage and Druid. Ardu has his Mage and the Zoo deck. Mm -hmm. What do you think they are going to take for the next next game? Well, you know, I was a little disappointed that Freshka, of all people, didn't bring the Grim Patron Warrior, just because <laughs> I feel like I feel like he sh he would be the one to do it if, uh, if there was one pro bold enough. He was also a guy that helped put Fatigue Mage on the map. Someone who was like, oh, okay, I've heard of Freshka, but maybe I don't know anything he's done. That Fatigue Mage, you can thank this guy. A lot of the, oh, yeah. as well as the Mill Druid, he really likes that too, and he helped put that on the map too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Freshka was behind a, a couple of concepts, uh, definitely the Mill decks. And um, I think he had done something with the Freeze Mage as well in the very beginning. Uh, so definitely a deck builder. But for Mage, I, I really... Well, we've seen the Mech Mage, so it seems like right. Freshka for this for, for this tournament, he brought the cookie-color decks. Uh, instead of 
bringing like crazy ideas and then showing his creativity for which we actually know him. He's bringing the cookie cutters because he knows that it's important to win, get the points and advance. Um, but for Ardu, I think Ardu might be bringing his uh, trusted tempo mage that he showed before in a couple of tournaments. What do you think about it? Right. Yeah, I think tempo mage might be his, uh, one of Ardu's most comfortable decks too. Uh, so I, it wouldn't surprise me if he brought that and whipped it out here. Instead, he's going to opt to go for the zoo once again. Although I, I, f I have a hard time calling it zoo. It's just similar to like a mid-range warlock that Colento is using and I know a few other people and it just relies on really good big powerful tempo plays and early board control very similar to Paladin in a way and well, looking you don't at really this, well looking at this hand I, I'm actually thinking this is Demon Lock um, we fought at Zoo because we are um, we want to see Zoo with gang balls and and jugglers but the Demon Lock is, is exactly what we see here a lot of Burst, Mogannis, Defender Argus, Sylvanas, and um, it's kind of like a more aggressive deck that's oriented around uh, the Void Colors. Yeah, so that's why I felt like you can call it more of a mid-range Warlock as opposed to, like, Zoo, because it's definitely not... Like, it's gotten so far away from Zoo. The whole purpose of why you called it Zoo is that originally you just had minions and not spells. Now we have Power of Overwhelmings. Now we have Implosions. Implosions. Yeah. Right. So it's like, you know, you you actually have some decent spells. It's actually like it's factually incorrect to call it zoo now. So that's why oh, yeah, you that's... know calling it mid range seems to be more appropriate in my book. All right, so how does our mid range warlock um match versus the druid deck? The druid deck that gets wide growth on, on two and can bring Violet Teacher on four. Well, I think Druid still has a hard time dealing with Doomguard, just in terms of raw stats. That's for that's for sure. But this kind of start from RDU is not what he's looking for. He wants to curve out really well, just like any mid-range deck. You rely a lot on snowballing your tempo. And life tapping is an excellent feature for Warlock, but not necessarily what you want to see this early on. I'm always on the fence because um, the Demon Lock has a couple of builds. Uh, more aggressive and more defensive. And people are still arguing if, if you should play the, the Void Callers. Uh, the Void Walkers, I mean. The uh, Void Callers obviously you play, but uh, Void Walker is a card that some people just cut from the deck because it's not aggressive enough. It's it's great to have when you have Morganis, obviously, because it's a demon that's getting buffed. But uh, early on, it's uh, it's a weird card. If you're expecting a lot of aggro, you can play it, but if you want to be an aggressive deck, you can probably ignore it. Mistress of Pain is another card. Some people play it, some people don't. Healbot. We haven't seen Healbot for RDU, so I think he cut it from the deck. Void Terror. Yeah, vo yeah, Void Terror seems to be one of the, the big power plays. You have Power Overwhelming, and then you Void Terror on, like, a Void Caller, absorb the stats, and put out Mail Ganis, and it's just, like, crazy, insane, powerful stuff. Um, but, you know, Druid is taking the initiative, following up the Wild Growth, and trying to see if he can kill RDU by turn 7. And That's there, insane. There is no proper response yet. Yeah, even though RDU has so many cards in his hand and Druid is actually lacking, Druid has Swipe and Keeper of the Grove. He has full wow. board. That was the quickest win I've seen from the Druid versus Warlock in my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, short of like, I remember at VGVN, uh, I don't know if you were casting with me, but there's this one Colento game where he had. Um, oh, yeah, I, I don't remember. Know if he was playing Colento or play, or Colento was the one playing it, but like by turn two, there was like an insane amount of uh, board because of innervates with Power of the Wilds and, and Echoing Oozes. So uh, it, it was ridiculous, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, it, it can sometimes happen with Druid. But uh, still, like, Dr. Boom on turn 5 is super powerful. And right now, Freshka ensured the win for the Druid. He only needs to win with his Mech Mage uh, going against um, the Demon Lock and against the Mage that already you brought that we haven't seen yet. Well, he definitely has an advantage and an edge to win the match. But uh, Ardu is a player that can come from behind. And um, even though he seems emotional, he played so many matches in his life that he is keeping his cool. And he's one of the players that can uh, actually win from a bad position. Well, uh, this, this Warlock deck's not working out for him just yet, but how can you blame him when Freshka in two straight games has, I guess, the nuts? You ask him what else would he want, 
that game and i don't think he'd pick want anything else other than maybe savage roar just to pressure just to leverage his pressure even more but i think fresh good basically got off to the dream start so if already you can two zero this mech mage remaining from freshka then uh then he can do this otherwise if already queues up warlock again and loses then his warlock deck is the one that gets three would so It'd be a really tough uh, pill to swallow if RDU is in that spot. I I'm looking forward to seeing if maybe he can switch out uh, if he feels like uh, whatever his mage is is better against his mech mage. Although, you know, if he's not playing freeze, for example, then and he's playing a mech mage and he's going to go for the mirror. I don't know. I feel like the warlock is a lot more robust and able to handle whatever shenanigans the mage puts out. I'm trying to, like think how is this warlock going to ma uh, match versus mech mage and mech mage can snowball as always that's the power of the deck if you start with cogmaster a good frostball maybe mech warper into a snow chugger uh you can just snowball your opponents and here already you has the implosion as the card to aoe things he has the power of roaming on on the rubin egg but other than that it's Almost like every card, like one card every turn. Maybe stuff like Void Walker turn one into Abuse the Surgeon turn two to kill um, a coin and coins Mech Warper. Stuff like that. So I think like he still has a fair chance, but I will give an edge to Mech Mage in this matchup. Yeah, I suppose the other way you can go about it is like a Nerubian Egg. Then you have Power Overwhelming with Void Terror, and then you just have such a strong, resilient board like. A three five and a and a four four, or I guess maybe even more depends on how uh, big that power overwhelming ends up trading into. So I, I would assume that it has the the capable start to handle the early aggression, but um, you know, I, I I still think that this warlock deck just needs a couple more tune tuning points, and it, RD would be in a good spot. He's gonna try it one more time, but it's like you said, Freshka, if he gets the curve and he gets the early start. There's, there might not be any stopping him. Oh, yeah. But then Aryu got a coin, and uh, he got Haunted Creeper, one of the best creatures to counter the mech, uh, the um, minion strategies. So he has the tools, and he might be able to use them. Oh, what an elemental. Um, still, Freshka's curve is amazing. With Mech Warper, uh, Cogmaster to start with Mech Warper's Spider Tank into Water Elemental, Aryu might have a hard time defending against it. Hmm. Well, he has a pretty strong curve for now. Mech Warper is still resilient. He can even attack the face because he's not going to get a good trade, right? Unless he wants to deny his opponent from playing another buff minion, but Abuse Sergeant already is one of them, so the likelihood of him having the second one is not that high. And we know that you've cut stuff like Direwolf Alpha for other important cards, so I don't think uh, he's too worried there. Yeah, like I think by now Freshka has a good um, understanding of what's in the RDU's deck. He's seen a lot of cards, so more or less he knows a around like twenty-five cards in the deck. What do you think about Ragnaros and Mech Mage? It's a recent addition. It's like some players started adding Ragnaros to get a bit more end game. Well, uh, I I mean personally, I think Ragnaros is always good in a deck that you want to be aggressive on. Oh, look at that. Four damage oh, on the four. implosion. Uh, with, with a board like that, Ragnaros is awful. Yeah. If, if uh, you can keep protecting it, but generally speaking, I don't mind it, especially since people are always calculating for Fireball and not Rag. Implosion like, for four was so important here, because not only he killed that pilot of Shredder, he also ensured four four on board that will um, help him to, to control what's happening here. Man, it's so funny that everything costs a little bit extra. And a deck with so many minions, it's like Mana Wraith is really problematic. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at Ragnaros here again and just trying to evaluate how good it is. And I'm just thinking about how some people are even put like like Pyroblast in their Mech Mage deck just so that way they can have extra damage stretch. And, uh, you know, I guess Ragnaros is th that compromise, not to mention that um, you already have Dr. Boom anyways. So if they have that one big game hunter, you might have another bomb, in which case they can't answer with just BGH. Oh, yeah. 
Here are you not getting power overwhelming. Uh, will be important. He has that Voiter um, that might work. But then he's not able to handle... Oh, he goes for the Doom Guard already. He goes to the Doom Guard. He's not going to wait at all. Like, you know, he had Void Caller, right? So, yeah. Had... Wait for the opportunity to trade. He plays a Doom Guard instead. What do you think about that? Well, that was interesting. Like he had a couple of plays. He could go for um, Void Caller and the Void uh, Void Walker to like limit the number of demons in his hand to get the um, sure sure thing. Oh, excuse me for a moment. No, it looks like uh, damage got pulled away for a second. Um, Frost bolting on the Doom Guard is imperative, so that way you can stop him from getting two for one guaranteed. You are pressuring a significant amount. You have Fireball and Ragnaros, so this is the 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 push for the victory for Freshka. RD picks up Defender Vargas, which is a pretty significant draw too. Only problem is that if he doesn't taunt up, and he just plays Sylvanas, he dies. So as much as it's like, uh, not the most powerful move as opposed to playing Sylvanas onto the board. This is what he needs to do to survive. He's got a wall of taunts. And, and that uh, might work. Yeah. Because um, Megmage is not known for playing Flame Strike. So right now, this Ragnaros, as you mentioned, uh, well, Freshka won't be able to play this turn. But still, having so many taunts and that Nerubinek turning it at 4-4... Uh, Aryu will be able to start trading those minions and fresh guys getting out of cards. That Sylvanas will also be super important for the Ragnaros next turn. So um, if if Freshka is uh, not able to contain this board, he will be in a situation where Aryu can actually come back. Absolutely. So um, here's again an opportunity for maybe Sylvanas for her to have a pretty big impact onto the board. And will Freshka have the time? You know, does he regret not having like another minion that can potentially have higher impact than Ragnaros? Or is he going to drop Ragnaros now that he has an opportunity to potentially go for uh, a huge op a huge damage? It's just so risky with Sylvanas on there. I don't think you can ever really take that. Well, I still think he has a good board and he got rid of all the taunts. Uh, so right now this Anayotron... Well, Sylvanas isn't going to die this turn. So right now it's looking, right. again, good for fresh card. He has to, to deal with this board, kill it, and maybe get rid of his own Savannahs as well. Wow. Fireball onto the Nerubi instead of keeping it. Do you? Uh, that's, that's really interesting considering that most people would want to keep that Fireball for the game-ending damage. So he's really concerned about making sure that the board control is in his favor here, and hopefully his minions can continue to put in damage. Yeah, I like the play because um, this way he ensured that Anartron is not going to die easily and Sylvanas is not going to trade with one of, of his minions. If that 4 4 would survive, the Abusive Surgeon was able to buff, uh, let's say, of uh, Water Elemental, and then Sylvanas trading into it would just um, die and steal one of the minions that, that Freshka has. So I think the Fireball saved him there from uh, Sylvanas. Oh, actually, right. <laughs> With knife, with knife juggler, RD was able uh, to. That was cute. That was yeah, very that was cute play. Turn. Yeah, getting the steal of the water elemental was pretty significant too. And uh, well, new entity has been summoned, and maybe Ragnaros can end this game. One in five chance. Twenty percent. RD is see. a little confused because he doesn't expect Ragnaros. Mm, shooting water elemental. Oh man, Doom Guard draw. Well, Aryu needs to get rid of this of that Ragnaros wow. right now. He only rolls a two off the implosion, but that's still more targets. And of course, Aryu recognizes that he needs to keep Doom Guard as the finisher because he can't get it mirror entitied. Uh, five, eleven, thirteen damage. So Aryu has lethal if his opponent's Ragnaros. Actually, there's no way he can do it because he either kills him. Yeah, or, or one of the minions. So it's 510 points of damage. Dr. Boom isn't... Well, no, Mirror Entity is actually stopping you from doing anything here. Yeah. And now tapping is hard because of uh, the Tinkertown Technician. You have to trade that too. He picks up Flame Imp. Oh my god, this is That's a card terrible. I would hate to draw at this point. Well, maybe he has to kill, he has to summon Doomguard and kill uh, his opponent's Doomguard. 
What about like attacking the free free with gang balls, getting a one one, then uh, using your one of the one ones and uh, attacking for two? How much damage do you have on your side? Still not enough. Yeah, it is a really tough calculation. Um, Doomguard, that, Doomguard makes sense. Yeah. You know, as much as you hate losing Dr. Boom, your opponent has a second mirror entity, so even if he held on to it, he'd be locked out for a long time. Well, right now, uh, Freshka will have 33% to win the game. Uh, even killing the Doomguard is amazing here. Just don't kill the 1-1? One -one. Actually, yeah. Uh, you kill... Yeah. yeah, you kill the 1-1, one -one and now you have... Um, well, yeah. No, Doomguard is not it. Uh oh. Now we can see how good Gang Boss is. Are you with double Gang Boss? Can he win here? <gasps> Silence right. Ragnaros. No, no, and that gets copied too. Oh man. So, uh, at this point, Freshka is just going to win with a straight hit to the face, and that's a 3 1. So, RDU taps out, and we have uh, the first series of the day going over to Freshka. Ragnaros was able to survive for three turns, was it? Or four turns? Yeah, but he did like... He did like five damage total. <laughs> like in terms well, of effective H HP killed. He killed like a so, two health minion, a one health minion, and like another two health minion, I think. So. Oh, come on, but it mattered. It killed demons. It, it, it did. It was put. It killed minions, it uh, re controlled the board, and made it really difficult um, in co combination with Mirror Entity. So in that scenario, it was excellent. Uh, and Freshka gets paid, rewarded for a 3-1 over RDU. So nice. I, I guess RDU's having a little bit of a rough past seven days here. Uh, this previous seven days, he was on a tear, you know, doing well in the Xfinity Hearthstone Invitational and doing pretty good in a few other things. But uh, at Seat Story Cup, uh, in, the, 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 in this match here, he's been struggling a little bit, kind of having you know some results where he's doing pretty okay and then some results where he's struggling. So we'll see if he's able to piece it together for Black Rock Mountain. I think that Gardy just needs to figure out the format. Uh, he was uh, one of the top players with the last hero standing. And uh, after, after losing to me in a Seed Story Cup, he said that he really brought bad decks like he doesn't think he uh made any misplays he's just had a bad lineup so he's testing stuff like even here he brought a bit different lineup and uh i think he will just get back to to being one of the best players he just needs to figure it out and, and test a bit more well uh, the warlock gets zero three so maybe the zoo isn't today or that mid-range warlock whatever we're gonna call it maybe that's the uh the poison the kryptonite for rd we'll find out more as i'm pretty sure some other people will be playing testing it today as we come back with more Hearthstone here at the NVIDIA Pro-Am Tournament with Frodan Nimsh, we'll be right back.